a partner with Gold Star Families to give the money for the guidance service. And there's going to be a dog tag on your can to tell you. Hello, folks. Tonight's hangout is not about a particular beer, but uh, it's about a, um, like a debate, a topic, debate topic. The three-tier system, yay or nay. In other words, we've had the three-tier system in place since 1933. The states, they vary in how they are, uh, construct this system. It follows a general principle. And the whole point of this is, do you agree with it? Do you oppose it? Or, and like I put in the description, do you even care? Now, Eric, I muted y'all, but y'all gonna unmute yourself. You had a lot of background noise, so. Uh, um, anyway, because um, they were getting their beers, and we have Michael from, we have Michael Komarov live from Brooklyn, New York. We have Eric and Dan trying to get their act together live, live, live from uh, Boston, Mass. Well, Massachusetts, not actually Boston, but that area uh, between Boston and Rhode Island. Yes, and then we have uh, Jacob from Indiana. And then the lone southerner so far, not necessarily completely, is myself, Louisiana Beer Reviews. Now, uh, next week we're going to do whiskey. And then uh, I have some ideas for like maybe some longboard beers, like longboard, that golden ale, and longboard, uh, the lager, lo not longboard, uh, Kona Brewing, I'm sorry. Kona. Golden Ale and Kona uh, um, Longboard Lager. Sorry about that. So those would be interesting to look at. And I think most people can get the Kona beers. I can get some of them. Um, but that Kona Porter was very expensive, though. I said, oh, no, I don't think I'm paying that much for a, just a regular old Porter. But um, maybe I'll force myself to buy it. Well, tonight I have Michelob Amberbach. Yes. Distributed by Southern Eagle in Louisiana and Southern Eagle is also located in Florida. And interestingly, it is owned by the Bush family. <laughs> B U S C H, heard of them? Okay. Uh, um, so I'll explain the three tier system. I, I have some links brought up here. I have uh, the National Beer Wholesalers Association, and they're giving an explanation of it. And then, of course, they're going to defend it. They're going to obviously defend it because that's their whole livelihood, and they exist because of the system. Um, and I can read some of that if you need me to. What it is is before Prohibition in 1919, the beer industry was very, uh, we could say, unregulated. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of rules behind it. There's Gary from uh, Tennessee, formerly of Virginia, joining in. Yeah, hello everyone. So you caught me right when I was starting the explanation. So in the past, and this is still the case in other countries, beer companies, breweries could not only produce beer, they could sell beer directly to grocery stores or depending on the state liquor stores. Uh, breweries could own their own bars. Like they had Michelob bars around the United States. Either they were owned directly by Anheuser-Busch or in some cases franchises. You could be part of the Michelob bar room system as long as you sold what? Michelob, uh, which is actually a, a draft only beer, I believe, until 1962 when they started canning and bottling it. Um, that's when they came out with the teardrop shaped bottle in 1962. Uh, uh, so they had all these kind of things uh, in England. Even today, they have beer companies that own their own hotel chains, and it's dedicated to that beer brand and all that. Uh, well, um, in 1933, when the prohibition was repealed with the 21st Amendment, the states said they wanted to start regulating. That was sort of the compromise. Well, we'll repeal prohibition, but we have to regulate it. So they came up with a three-tier system, which is a tier. The top tier is the brewer. They brew the beer, but they cannot distribute it, nor can they directly sell it to a retailer. 
The second tier, the middleman, is the distributor. They don't produce beer and they don't sell it directly. They're the wholesaler. They buy beer from the brewer and they distribute it to the retailer. And then, of course, the bottom tier is the retailer. They're able to sell beer to the public. Now, there are some exceptions, like with brew pubs, right? Brew pubs, which is a pretty small scale thing. You can go to Anheuser Busch in Houston, Texas, and drink beer at their bar, the brew pub. But I don't think too many people are doing that. Um, but the general rule, the general rule, is the three tier system. Now, uh, any questions about the concept before we start looking at the favorable? or unfavorable viewpoint toward the system, or the third option is you don't care either way, which is fine. Okay, so Eric, you and Dan, now that you've kind of discombobulated. His name, is, his name is David, and he spilled some beer, so we were vigorously cleaning, and we're next to a- I'm sorry, we're, Dan, next, to a, we're next to a leather couch that got a little wet, so we had to clean that up, but- um, Yeah, I can see yeah. you problem. What you were talking about when it came to those themed bars that, that were owned by major breweries around the country. And I know that nowadays um, companies and, and, and bars and restaurants get in trouble for doing that, for doing that almost like a payola kind of a thing. We'll pay you as long as you put our beers in your bars. I know there was a story out of Boston when it came to the Miller Brewing Company with that. So I'm not really all that um, excited about that kind of you know, part of the beer community, but I think they should just, bars and brewer, uh, bars should just have as many different options as they can and let the consumer decide and not let money dictate who, who gets who gets what and what's going to be pushed. It's up to the consumer more than it should be up to uh, the brewers or the distributor. Well, it's a good point, uh, Eric, but one of the problems exactly about that too as well is just that I mean, when it comes down to getting a craft beer at that point versus actually getting something like a Miller Lite, you're probably going to get a better price for Miller Lite than you're probably going to get from like the craft beer. At that no, point. that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, no brewery should push a beer into a bar by giving by giving the bar owners money to, to put their beer on tap. So incentive moral. At that point? Yeah, I don't like that part portion of up beer. Okay, well, before we get into like little specific practice sword i want to focus really with david and you and then michael and jacob and uh, gary uh and oh, oh david you live in massachusetts also yep i've been on the beer review a few times too as well I remember. and i must say how are your saints doing how's the saints mm -hmm. oh they're doing all right sitting down during the anthem and winning some game winning a game and losing losing uh two games and uh you know, Drew Brees. Tulane is <laughs> Tulane won two games and lost two, so we were excited about that. Okay, so Michael, you wanted to ask me a question? Didn't say anything. I'm cool. Oh, someone? You got kicked off, I think. Oh, Jay got kicked off. Well, yeah. But yeah, let me get back to the real, real point of the question, which was the three-tier system, which is breweries, the distributor, and then the bar. I think I, I think that there's a lot of really good and negative when, when it comes to all three of those things. Obviously, you need all three of those things to, to eventually get the product into the hands of the consumers. I think the consumers need to be educated on what they're buying, and if they're going to rate beer, rate beer for what they're actually, you know, what the beer actually is. And I think consumer, I think consumers and um, I think consumers and uh, stores and bars that sell beer need to be very conscious about um, um, the dating system on beer, especially if it's an IPA or a flavored beer. They need to be really conscious about that. And I think that the breweries need to listen to what the uh, people want to drink. Although I think that. If, if a brewer is really just passionate and wants to get his product out there and, you know, make a name for himself, then that's, that's okay. cool. Everybody's got to work in harmony to, to make this thing work. It's not, I don't think one part of the tier system should be, you know, more important than the other. Okay, well, hold on a second.
I got kicked out for a moment because I, I do not own a gaming computer. But anyway, uh, um, plus Microsoft Internet Explorer is kind of crappy. Um, I want to ask you this. Let's simplify. Do you support the concept of the three-tier system or do you oppose the concept? That's really the main. I don't, yeah. I don't know how I don't I don't I don't know how beer would get to a consumer without the three tier system. So the three tier system is from exactly its basis of what does a brewer do? Brewer's job is to brew beer. Distributor's job is to distribute beer. And exactly a bar at that point is supposed to provide beverages at the point of said beer to patrons. So I mean I believe that in theory the three tier system does work. However, there are some exactly um, unique and shady dealings at the point that are done um, for pushing exactly certain beers here and there. Just basically to include, like, increase like profit points for certain beverages from, uh, say, brewers. Okay, it obviously works because we're drinking beer, right? Yeah. Of course. Now, I'm going to get back to y'all, and I'm not cutting y'all off permanently. I just want to go around to some other people. Not, I'm not, we got time. We're not crossing. Okay. Um, now, Jacob came on right after Eric. So what do you think, Jacob? Do you support the three-tier system, that concept, or do you oppose it, or do you even care? Uh, I, I would have to say that I oppose the concept, but in practice, it's not bad. Like, I'm happy with the products I get and... Uh, you know, there's a there's a wide variety. Do I see problems with it? Yes, but um, but you know, in practice, right now, I don't have any any problems with it. But strictly concept, I I would I'd probably say nay. Okay, I'll give you my input. Okay, so he's voted. We got two that I'm not sure about. We got Jacob saying no. Uh, the piece of post to the concept. And that's what we're really talking about the concept of it. I'm going to say no. I was talking to a, a area salesman for a distributor, a Miller distributor, uh, two days ago, and I talked to him about this. He seemed at first confused, like he wasn't even aware that at one time the system didn't exist. In his mind, it always, this was always the way it was done. So he said it works. I said, well, we know it works. You're we're drinking beer, you know. And, um, uh, but he really wasn't aware that at one time the breweries did their own distributing. So I, I, I would like to get one of those distributors to come on here and, you know, make their case, but I don't know if they'll do it. But um, my point of view about it is I don't support it. Okay. But I'm not getting on here to just say, well, y'all have to agree with me. I don't, I don't support the concept because obviously I would prefer a more of a free enterprise system where, if the breweries want to do their own, di like I told this guy uh, Monday, he didn't put, he didn't, he said, yeah, that is true. I said, well, what would stop Miller from buying their own delivery trucks, delivering their own stuff? I mean, I said, you would just be working directly for Miller instead of a middleman. He said, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, I mean, could they do it? Yeah. Now maybe they wouldn't want to do it. Maybe they'd say, well, we'd rather just have a middleman handle it. That's fine. If they want to do that. There's no, see, I'm saying the free enterprise approach would say if you want to have a middleman, hire one. If you don't want to have a middleman, directly distribute your own beer. Doesn't matter to me. If uh, Anheuser Busch wants to have their own bars, I just don't oppose that. That's so my, my attitude about it is no, I do not support the three tier system. All the arguments they make on the, the, the American Wholesale uh, Beer Wholesalers Association website, I'm saying to myself, yeah, but the brewers could do all those things. They can ensure quality. They could ensure a chain to trace back tainted products. I mean, all that stuff could be done directly from the brewer. They could even have their own beer stores. They could have Budweiser beer stores. I mean, I keep saying Anheuser Busch. Uh, they could have a craft beer beer store, whatever, whatever they could handle. That's just my cut and dry. That's it. <clears throat> That's my attitude. I don't support the concept. Although it, I, you know, I mean, it does work. I'm drinking the beer. Okay, now. We'll go to Michael and then Gary. One second. Go to somebody else. I'll be right back. Okay, Michael's got to do something. Okay, Gary. All right. So my opinion is um, 
I really don't have that strong of an opinion one way or the other. I guess I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. But I think that consumers should have more options in terms of how they want to purchase the beer. Like if I could say, for example, you live near a particular brewery and you want to buy directly from the brewer. You know, I don't see what's the problem with just if you live there, why not just go buy directly from the brewer? Or if you want to buy directly from a distributor because a particular retail outlet won't carry the particular product that you want, but a distributor will say, okay, well, if that retailer will not sell it, well, we'll buy it, you buy it from us, and we can work something out, you know, something like that. Because it's all about what the consumer wants. Make the consumer happy because if your product's not being consumed, you don't have a business, period. What? Right, and I'm saying in the free market approach, you, the consumer would have the choice because there wouldn't be as many regulations and they could do all the things you're saying, buy directly from a brewer, uh, go to a brewer's own outlet, all these more, uh, there would be more options, I think, conceptually. Now, Maxwell mm -hmm. says, hello, Ronald, nice to see you. Hey, Maxwell, well, uh, greetings over there in Poland. Apocalypse Doomer says, hey, Ron, just popping in. Hey, Apocalypse Doomer. Okay, so back to our people. Oh, there was just, can I just add one more thing? Sure. Well, the reason why I take that stance is since we can get natural ice and bottle versions in select amounts, but yet, even though they pulled it from your area down there in Louisiana, you can't go to a retail outlet or to the distributor or anything else to directly purchase it for you, and they say, no, you can't do that, or no, we won't bring it in, but yet, if you want that product, you know, why not try to find a way to get it? Yeah, no, I, I have talked to distributors before, and they have brought products in. And I've talked to the retailer before, and they've talked to the distributor and brought products in. Like certain whiskeys, oh, they said, uh, oh, we don't have that. But we'll find out. So they call the distributor. Yeah. The next, in two days, I got the whiskey. It took me one day to get the gin, and it, it took me about – a month to get Bush Signature Copper Lager because they told me, nah, the distributor, no, I'm sorry, retraction, the Anheuser Busch Company. Oh, hang on. Beautiful, okay. beautiful. I can see it. It's so pretty. Sorry, my wife is on there. Just hang on. That's what she Go said. Ah! Heard all that. Something's <laughs> pretty. Nah, uh, 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 okay, so I called Anheuser Busch. I sent them an email, said, when are we going to get Bush Signature Lager? And they, they always respond fast. They said, nah, we're not going to sell it in your area. I said, heck. So I talked to um, the area salesman. I said, this is no good. So then he had, they had a sales meeting like that once a month, and he brought it up and said, y'all ought to try to sell it down there, down here, because one guy's asking for it, Louisiana Beer Reviews, blah, blah, blah. Well, then all of a sudden we had it. Naturally, but of course it didn't matter because the whole thing failed. They didn't promote it and the beer pulled off the market last year, which is their fault. But so you can work through the system and get products in. But like I'm saying, and Gary's saying sorta, although he's saying he didn't really care either way, but I'm saying why not have take the shackles off and make it even more freer. Now you, you see, because these are kind of like little monopolies. Only ant only Jim Carrey can sell Miller in my town. All right, nobody else can distribute. I'm sorry, distribute Miller. Only Southern Eagle can distribute Anheuser Busch products and a whole host of craft beers because they fight over those craft beers, you do. Know. But in a free market system, well, anybody could distribute anything if they made the best deal with the brewery. You see, um, so. Uh, People say, well, it won't work. It won't work. Well, how do you know it? Never tried it. It worked, it worked up until 1919. I think everybody was complaining. They were only saying too many people were drinking too much. They weren't complaining about distribution uh, channels. Now back to Michael. I guess I would take the same position that I'm indifferent on the system. I'm not for it. I'm not against it. But I do see that it definitely works. But there have to be people who are not getting a fair deal, maybe because some distributors are stronger and they're able to um, make bigger deals and cut out smaller distributors. But I don't know how you could work that system anyway, because it you'd have to have some middle ground or somebody to um, 
work it out in between. So it's it's hard. But the whole changing the whole system is probably impossible. Anyway, I don't think you could just do away with the system. It doesn't seem like it'll work. Oh, they said you couldn't even they said you'd never be able to prohibit alcohol, but they did it, although it was a failure because they still smuggled it. So I guess they couldn't prohibit it, right? Um, but then they say so you'll never repeal it. Well, they repealed it. So I would say I agree with Michael in the sense that it's probably unlikely, but I wouldn't say it's impossible. Hey, Michael, maybe this video will start the ball rolling in it. In 12 years, they'll get rid of the three tier system and I'll be on CBS saying, well, honestly. I was, first, I was the first one. It was my Google Hangout that caused the talk to start. Right. Honestly, I was behind it and they would say, you, you <laughs> wanted to get rid of it though, didn't you? And I would say, yes. And we have information that Anheuser-Busch paid you $600,000 to make that video to get the ball rolling. And I would say, I have nothing else to say on this interview. All right. Talk to my Talk to my All right, what? I got a question here. And my question is, my question is, how is the three-tiered system in beer any different from any other manufacturer of a product like a TV, a telephone, a beer glass, um, uh, an automobile? How is that any different? Those people that manufacture those products have to get them distributed somewhere so that the consumer can eventually go out and buy that product that the manufacturer has produced. Well, I'll tell you how right? it's different. It's a law that requires it, whereas in other industries, it might just be an option, you see. Maybe uh, General Motors has their, General Motors may have their own distribution company to ship cars to retailers. This I don't know. Now, I'm saying if you didn't have the three tier system, you'd still have it in the sense that it would, like you're saying, it'd have to get to the retailer, right? Right. But you could have vertical integration. In other words, I keep using Anheuser Busch just because I see these people every day of my life. You know, I'm a, of course, I'm wearing the shirt, but I'm getting a $600,000 check. Now, but uh, yeah, right. Now, uh, so. You could have vertical integration. In other words, Anheuser-Busch could be the brewer. They could have their own trucks, their own distribution system, and they could have their own retail store. Now, it might be very inconvenient for them to do that. It may be something they wouldn't choose to do. It might be cheaper and more convenient for them to uh, hire somebody to distribute it. I don't know. And on the other hand, that's not really my problem. I'm saying in my mind, it would be better to let the free market reign, you know, like you say, oh, you're saying let chaos reign. In a sense, yeah, I'm saying that, but not because it all shakes out, you see. And these distributors do dirty stuff against each other. I hear these stories that these guys tell me, like how they go in. And of course, a beer brewery could do the same thing if they were had their own distribution company, but they go into the, uh, convenience store and they rip down each other's signs when nobody's looking. <laughs> they do that. I asked the guy, I said, how come they don't have any signs for this big, deep discounted uh, ice beer? He said, oh, because the Budweiser people come in and they tear them down when nobody's looking. They don't want anybody to see how cheap it is. He said, and they also do blocking. I said, what's blocking? He said, "Oh, they'll set up the beer and the in a, they'll set up the beer and the signs in a way that blocks the other brands." <laughs> I said, "Oh, I said y'all must get pretty angry about this sometimes." He said, "Oh yeah, one time they had a fight in a parking lot <laughs> between the uh, Miller and Budweiser guy over that stuff, which I found was comical, you know. But uh, but I mean the distributors do that, but I mean the breweries could do that to each other as well if they were. Uh, and I don't endorse blocking." I don't endorse ripping people's signs down, but how could you regulate not doing bad things, right? You know, I don't endorse people spitting on the sidewalk, but people still do it. You know what? You know what? I was just thinking here. I didn't want to cut you off there, but if we're complaining about the three-tier system because of laws in this country, then I think we're having the entire wrong conversation this evening. If we don't like the three-tier system because of laws, well, then we need to have a conversation about how can we change 
alcohol laws in this country so that it benefits everybody that would like to consume alcohol or consume oh, no I agree with you no, this is part of that conversation it's it's like a bigger philosophical a philosophical uh, discussion yeah. about if there's yeah if there's one thing that I don't like as far as the laws are concerned in the United States or that it, it or that every state basically gets to decide their own beer distribution not not even just beer distribution what I'm talking about is the shipping and the export in between states like if I want to go online and buy some craft beer or if I want to if I want to conduct in beer trade well technically I'm not supposed to do it and they don't really allow us to do it but there are other states that just think it's totally acceptable and fine to do that I, I just don't know why that it needs to be an individual states you know right why can't we all just get along and and buy beer I mean wine gets the wine gets the preferential treatment at least in Massachusetts we can ship wine to our to our private residences as long as it goes to the distributor first and the distributor ships it to your house but we just can't do that with beer or any other spirit well wait a minute that's that's a that is a structural question because Remember, the Constitution says Congress, the United States government can regulate interstate commerce, and each state regulates intra-state commerce. So you see, you got to deal with that. Uh, we have 50 states; we don't have just one state. But yeah, isn't the law isn't the law, isn't the law that it, isn't the law that if 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 it if it involves interstate commerce, then it's a federal issue. I just said that. That's what I'm talking about. But then every state gets to decide what they want to do, which is mind-boggling to me. No, internally, not externally. That's why New Hampshire has their own state-owned liquor stores and, and wine stores, mm -hmm. whereas Louisiana, there's no such thing. Louisiana. Oh, I'm just talking about. I'm just talking about sh buying it and shipping it from online and shipping it through like UPS and FedEx and those kind of things. Okay. Okay. I'm talking about the same thing. If it was between states, say from Massachusetts to Rhode Island, that would be what kind of trade? Interstate commerce, correct? So that would fall under whose authority would that fall under? The United States government. If it was uh, Springfield, Massachusetts to Boston, where would that, under whose authority would that fall? Only Massachusetts. Yes, yeah, not even what I'm saying at all. What I'm what I'm saying is is that the, the is that there are individual states like Massachusetts that doesn't even allow beers to be shipped to their homes. I know that. I realize what you're saying. I think I've changed my mind. I'm saying, what do you want me to do about it, Eric? I can't control each state doing their own process. What, what? I'm saying that should be a part of the three-tier system that the federal government really needs to get involved in. I don't think the individual states, uh, you know, really do it correctly on their own. Yeah, do you understand the three-tier system is basically run by each state now? There's no, each distributor exists within the state, within the authority of each state. Mm -hmm. That's why you have all these right. hundreds of distributors. There's no United States distributor. Okay, what were you saying, uh, Jacob? You changed your mind. Now what? Good. I'm. The more and more we talk about it, the more and more I'm for it. Uh, like I totally agree with you, Jay. Uh, maybe Anheuser Busch doesn't want to, like, put their money and their resources into it. But if they wanted to, they've got the money to do it. And I could see where they could buy all of the distribution out with as much money that they have. And if we're worried about uh, distributors treating the consumers poorly now, if if all distribution goes through Anheuser Busch or the Bush family or Miller or something, they could, you know, like jack up the prices or make it hard to get stuff and also I think do that I know they wouldn't make the prices lower and wait a minute I never said that the uh, distributors treat people bad right now I never said that in this hangout I always get treated pretty good by distributors I never 
I never said distributors treat us bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think someone else said that, but um, also I'd like to say that if there is like this monopoly of distribution, say by Anheuser-Busch or whoever, um, there's a potential there for them to ruin, not ruin, but like kind of force these, because like, you know, these craft beer people, when they start out, they'll want distribution, right? But they don't have enough resources to, to have their own. So at that point, they'd have to go through like the biggest one, right? And that could force one of these one of these big companies to uh, well, I, I, not force, but these big companies would say, "Hey, we're not going to distribute your stuff unless you, you know, sell us your company, or and unless you let us do your brewing or whatever." And then at that point, you're like ruining the, the small minute, town but guy. Wait, but wait a minute! But wait a minute! In a free enterprise system, you could do your own distribution. Right, but is isn't it difficult when you're first starting out? You would imagine I would imagine so. But so that's not my problem, that's their problem. They nobody made them start a brewery. Did I force somebody to start a brewery? No, I did not. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm just saying as the consumer, there's a lot of small town, small operation craft beer that I really enjoy. Me too. And I would hate to see it get to a point where there's one company with so much control that they're forcing they're forcing these craft guys to to give up their whole company just for distribution of their beer. I'm not saying it would happen, but there's a chance there's a chance for it to happen and it really scares me. <laughs> now now uh remember Remember what I said early on in this video? I said, uh, talked about Southern Eagle. And I said, uh, you might want to do some research on who owns Southern Eagle. Back in 1933, when the three tier system was instituted, Anheuser Busch was not allowed to start their own distribution structure, right? Couldn't do that. Had to have independent distributors. Okay, no problem. Guess who went and started a whole bunch of independent distribution companies around the United States? Guess which family did that? Bush. <laughs> oh, how could you? How did you know? So they're all the same family. They're all in cahoots. So uh, there's ways to get around this. Um, I was looking at this years ago, like all the distributor companies the beer distributors that are owned by the Bush family. I don't mean the same family, not August Bush, but maybe like Bill Bush and George Bush and Edward Bush and Theodore Bush and Isaac Bush. You know what I mean? All the relatives, everybody got their, uh, everybody got their, what you say, their uh, hand in it. And now since it's a monopoly sanctioned by the state government, they don't ever go away really. Um, so, um, Ron, I figured you'd want more power to the states, though, right? Yes. Well, that's where it's at, right? That's correct. So now we're down to the state level. Okay, so we're talking about a state instituted um, legal framework, right? Distribu distributionary right. and legal framework. Okay, so now we're in the state. Let's pick a state. Pick any state. Let's say uh, Florida. Okay. Do I think Florida should have a three-tier system? No, I would think Florida should practice free enterprise. I'm not saying every state should be the same, though. You understand? Uh, but, yeah, I would rather it be at the state level. Yes, yes, of course. But then within the state, then we start, then we go into the state. We start advocating for a, a more free enterprise system. Then you go into the county and start advocating for that there. <clears throat> then you go into the min municipalities, you advocate there. I'm not one of these one size fits all people. I believe in diversity. So each state, 
county municipalities should make their own rules and whatever rule works the best maybe that's the rule everybody will adopt and maybe it won't work the best everywhere new hampshire has state-owned liquor stores would i support that no are people in new hampshire up in arms and losing sleep over it every night because they got to buy liquor from a state-owned liquor store i doubt that do i stay up at night worrying about the three-tier system hardly but it seemed like an interesting topic to discuss. And um, now some people might say, oh, I see what you're doing. You're using this hangout as a veiled attempt to promote free enterprise. Well, most of my videos are veiled attempts to promote a hidden agenda, but people can read through that. So this is almost more of a political, economic ideology video than anything else right like we're saying we're saying maybe yeah, you're not right, right. You're, you're, you're right yeah you got me you trapped me because we could be talking about milk right now and be the same thing yeah right yeah i wouldn't argue i wouldn't uh, 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 i agree with you yes that's right okay. correct yeah it's uh beer is just the uh the product the video is about it political, economic, theoretical con right. concept and a person's support, opposition or indifference to the concept. Yeah, you got, yeah. So any, any other comments about this? Not right off, no. Yeah, I could, I can, I can find flaws with the system, but I can also point out a lot of good things about it. I don't know. I guess I guess I'm somewhere in between. Like, I'm not going to sit on my soapbox and say that this is the best way. We should never change it. But it could be a lot worse, I, I think. A lot worse. Oh. But it could course. be, like you say, it could be a lot better. It could be a lot worse. It could be the North Korean system where you have one distributor, one brewer, one retailer. Like Bush, right? Oh, no, that'd be the government. The government. That'd be the federal government. Well, in their case, they don't have a federal government. They just have the government. Right. Or... It could be total free enterprise, but like, you know, um, I'm, I'm saying, okay, here I am in Louisiana, I'm promoting the free enterprise approach. Some of the, some of y'all are saying, no, we ought to do it a little different, or we could have a mixed economy, you know, with some free enterprise, some government control, yeah. whatever, you know, I mean, I'm not here to dictate to say, this is the way it must be. I'm saying, let's just consider it and look at it, talk about it. Uh, this could be a this could be a uh, a topic that people don't really care about. That's fine. I mean, no one is obligated to care about the three tier system. Why should they have to care about it? Now, so any final thoughts? My thoughts, you know what they are. So I got nothing else to say, Michael. I'm in, like I said before. I'm indifferent. I, indifferent. The system, the way it's running now, is fine. Can you improve it? Probably. Is it likely that it'll be changed? Probably not. Um, a lot of people probably would say that we're too involved in something which is unlikely to be changed, but I'm sure there are other subjects you discuss which maybe are in the same area and um, are unlikely to have any change over time. But it certainly can't hurt to discuss it, and um, we'll have to watch over time what happens. Right, and things have changed because Washington State got rid of the three-tier system. So. Um, that was the third option, indifference. So, of course, you had the right to choose it. Uh, any last other comments? So. Yeah, I think in, in final thought on the concepts and the ideology, I'm indifferent. But in practice, how it is now, I'm for it. Okay. Because you're getting, you're getting your beer and you're not – oh, and by the way, I'm drinking Negro right. Modelo, Modelo Negro. That's a good beer. That's why I'm such in such a good mood right now. Um, because <laughs> I drank, I drank Amberbach and then I drank 
Modelo Negro. Gary, any last comments? Uh, not right off, other than just they should really think more about the consumer, what consumers want, what can work best to get products to the consumer much better, more effectively, and give them more options. Okay. They probably do think along those lines because if the consumer is happy, the consumer buys more product, they make more money, then they're happier, right? So that's what I was arguing with people about the NFL. You know, they didn't – see, a lot of people, they cannot look at things – I believe you guys can – but a lot of people can't look at things like in a hypothetical way, like a analytical or conceptual way. Like I was talking about the NFL and they were saying, you don't believe in free speech. I was like, are you dense? I said, I do believe in free speech. You can say whatever you want, but if you're in the entertainment industry and your whole livelihood is based on making the audience happy, how would it benefit you to antagonize and alienate probably 75% of your clientele, the audience. In my opinion, it's a stupid idea. It's a stupid move. Now, if you think antagonizing 75% of your fan base is a wise decision, then keep doing it. Um, but I'm thinking that that's probably not a good idea. Uh, ask Metallica if that's a good idea. All right. Um, now, um, uh, Eric and, and David. Yeah. We were just talking, and we were just we were just having a tiny discussion while we were listening to your your discussion, everybody. And one of the things, and I know my biggest complaint is is me being in the craft beer community. I would love to be able to to engage in beer trades legally. I mean, I could just say screw it and do it, but I don't feel right about just sending beer in the mail if it's not legal for me to do it. I wish that there were more forwarders and carriers. At least, in, at least with my state and the laws in a lot of other states that can't do it. I wish they had the opportunity to do it because we're basically not trying to break the law. We're just trying to have fun within the community, and we're not trying to give beer to children, for God's sakes. But anyways, that's my major complaint is the consumers aren't allowed to share it, you know, in, in a legal sense, depending on what state you're in. Otherwise, obviously, there has to be a manufacturer, and there has to be a way that it gets distributed to a store in the first place. So I'm okay with those two things. I just wish that the consumer had more of a, of, of a choice if they want to buy at a store or a bar or if they want to legally ship things in the mail for other people to try a product. Okay, and believe me, I, I, I agree with you. I yeah. wish all 50 states were super liberal about alcohol and would allow free shipment of beer to everybody or liquor or wine, whatever. I agree with that. I believe that. But unfortunately, in that case or maybe it is fortunate. We have a federal system, or we're supposed to have one at least, where you have 50 countries, really it's countries, it's supposed to be right. united, united in a federation, and they have their own, you know, everybody does not think the same way, you know, we're not, uh, so, uh, but I, I mean, yeah, I wish, I, I, I'm I, like you, I wish all the states were very liberal about alcohol shipments, not to mention drugs, uh, although I don't take drugs, uh, I'm very liberal when it comes to uh, drug laws, but, uh, um, but yeah, I agree with you. It's just that if you start demanding that all 50 states have the same laws, then you don't support federalism, and then that, that leads to problems. But uh, um, yeah, so um, the, the the bottom line is, is the three tier system going to go away? Uh, doubtful. That's very doubtful. But we just want to talk about it. Now, next week, we'll be, we'll be back on brands, brands. And I guarantee you, you ain't going to get this brand outside of the three-tier system unless you're smuggling. But then who would bother doing it with Evan Williams? It's like, Whoa. it's like, yeah, you're going to go to all that trouble to smuggle out Evan Williams when you can go down the street and buy it for ten ninety nine a bottle. I doubt that. Yeah. But I tried it yesterday. And I was so delighted. Let me tell you, I already posted my review. It's already on my page. I was so delighted by that. That bourbon, I just, I was just wound up about it. It wasn't the alcohol talking either. It was just my, the taste was so good. Oh, I wish I could do the hangout tonight, but of course we have to wait. We can't have everything right now. Can't have instant gratification. <laughs> yeah. Procedures, as they must be. Yeah. What? They have to follow. Right, we gotta have procedures. We gotta have some kind of uh, self-control. So, 
uh, next Wednesday at 6.30, we're going to look at a very famous bourbon whiskey, Evan Williams, the Black Label, that will tell you since 1783, but then if you do your research, you'll find out it's more like 1955, but <laughs> why let the truth get in the way of all of our fun? Thus, alcohol. Right. It is... It, it, it says 86 proof, and it really is 86 proof. So you don't, you don't want to drink too much of that stuff. Subject to facts. Yeah. Or maybe you do want to drink too much. All right. Anyway. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, we ought to do a hangout one night talking about alcohol laws, like should the drinking age go back to 18? Because I was, back in 1987, I was like a firebrand supporter of the 18-year-old drinking law. <laughs> I was a big time supporter. Huh? You said, I said the kids got to learn sometime. And yeah, yeah, we could probably say it some other time because otherwise we're jumping procedural measures too as well. But other countries have different drinking ages too as well. And I think they do a lot better exactly like over there than they, they do around here mm -hmm. for teaching kids how to drink. It might be a really good topic because um, there's so many things you could bring up about that. So yeah. many yeah. things. And that yeah, was such a big one. Huh? That would be cool. Yeah, so let's write that one down. About that. After we do the Evan Williams, we can either do the uh, Kona beers. I don't think there's too many people in the world excited about Kona beers, but I like Kona beers, you know. But, uh, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, you ever, you ever walk down the street and somebody stops you and says, What do you think about Kona? Uh, or, I like the coffee. They better not stop me because in the like, oh, well, I got to go. I'll say, wait, you asked me. <laughs> 30 minutes. Later. But wait. No. Secondly, we could bring up that topic. Should should uh, the drinking age be 18? Boy, that'd be a fascinating topic. Wow. All right. Well, thanks for joining. This was really fun, I thought. Uh, all right. So that's it, folks. Been a Take care, everybody. See you soon. Take care, everybody. Have a safe week and a safe weekend. All right, y'all have a good